Hello, Friendly Man here once again, and I'm here to teach you the Swiss system. Now, the first thing I have to mention is, this is a fake tournament. The people that I use is the, the top 10 people from FIDE. So, from the number one guy, all the way to the ninth guy. But there's 10 players. Guess who's the number 10th player? That's me. I have never played any of these players. I just want to, you know, if I ever had a chance, you know, I could... This is how it would look like, except for me doing what I'm going to do. So, what am I going to do? Now, I'm going to give myself one win, then the next one's going to be a draw, then I'm going to lose, then another win, then another draw. It's going to be a five-round tournament, but I'm going to give myself some points so I can mix it up, so you guys can see on the difference between, you know, when you draw someone and when you lose somebody, and stuff like that. So, another reason why I want to do this is, what happens you are a new player and you want to go into tournaments, so what do you do? Now, there is a system in place, we call it the Swiss system, that pairs people up. So the first thing that what happens is, you get this little card. Now, this little card, you're supposed to put your name, okay, and if you're unrated, you just leave that blank. And then maybe your address or your phone number. And then he fills in this part later on during the tournament. Of course, during this fake tournament that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing it right in front of you and doing all the work like a real tournament would happen except for the playing of the chess games. And But I get no payoff. You're just going to see this work of writing down everything. So, now, and this will teach you on how how the system is actually done. Now, if you're an old player already, you know, you've been playing for a couple years, you always been noticing them using a program like a computer program or even they're doing with this pro with this piece of paper I have seen other pieces of different kinds of paper and stuff like that over the years as well um, and you're not exactly sure on how they're getting the Swiss system done this is a good video for you to to check out so you can see on how they do what they do okay? so and another thing that a lot of programs and a lot of problems that come up is sometimes they don't do it right. There was a, a tournament in Toronto oh, a couple of years ago uh, where a lot of people were getting in big trouble, like the tournament directors were getting in big trouble because the something happened where like 2400s were playing you know 1600s and stuff like that and it shouldn't have been happening at the time because because they they didn't know how to do it right. So this is a good way for you to find out on how to pair people up right. There is a real good system I'll, I'll, I'm going to teach it to you, and uh, so let's uh, let's go through this uh, let's go through this fake tournament. is a win, a draw is a half a point, and a loss is nothing. Okay, in what you'll notice is the highest rated player always is the first one. The lowest rated player will be be at the bottom. Okay, in case of doubles, like here's a double, oops, uh, you can see that, here's a double, and here's another two doubles right here, these two guys are another double. So in case of doubles, a, you do it alphabetically. So he's a C, this is a K, so, you, so this is how you figure it out on how to do what you're doing. So right here you'll see like there's ranks. So at this point what you do is um, the person that with the highest rating he gets rank 1. So you go 1 and this guy goes 2, this guy goes 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven, <laughs> sorry, that's a bad seven. Seven, eight. I'm kind of on a side, eh? Um, eight, nine, and then me is ten. Okay, so when you're writing down uh, with these sheets, you're going to be using 
the ranking system on who plays who. So I'll get in a little bit more deeper into that a little bit later on. Okay, at this time, what you do is rank one to rank five is the top half. So the top players will play the bottom half. So you take from here and then you start and you move it over like this. So you flip a coin usually from these two players to see who what, what colors they want. But I'm going to give rank one white and that and that will determine the tournament later on how because you you always are staggering the colors so I'm just gonna pair them up real quickly and, and I'll show you the end results okay in the first round these two are playing against each other so what you do is first you write down who has white so this is so you put a W here indicate white and then you put a B here for black so now you write uh, Kramnik here and then you write Carlson here uh, sorry about the bad S okay. and then you write one here and then you write a six here. That six indicates the rank. This is the rank here. Okay? And then you put a plus or a negative depending on if he wins or loses. You also an equal sign if he draws. So, and that's how you write this in. And then you do that with all the other guys. Okay, after you pair everything up together like this, the tournament director is going to give you one of these sheets but first I want to mention some stuff that I forgot about um, Okay, you can never have the same color three times in a row so you can never have white three times you can never have black three times and another thing is when you're pairing these things up colors always have to alternate and you can never play the same person twice so so now when you so this is how you put all the sections uh, put the players like this and then you know this one's white this one's black and then you some people look at it to see who they're playing but then you go okay then you go with these guys and say okay round one is up and then if you're white you'll you'll see okay I'm, well, I'm on white side and this is your board number so just go to board one and sit on your, the white side so here I am I'm on board five so I would sit at board five and go to the black black pieces and then wait for my opponent and that's how I would know who I'm playing so, so in, in the bigger tournaments with where with, with these guys would be playing in they would actually know this the day before and, and so and they would prepare a special line or something like that but you don't have to worry about this we're just having a f fake little tournament so you know what's going on Okay, after everyone plays their games, they go up to the score sheet again, and then they put uh, who wins. Of course, like I was saying, the higher rated player will get the point, because I don't actually know these people. So, they, so I gave everyone the point except for me, because I get one win, and my next one is going to be a draw. So, now, now what you do is, you put... Uh, see, the best thing about the Swiss system is... Okay, eventually you find the player that you are going to be equal with. So, winners play winners, losers play losers. So, what you do is, now you start putting all the one points all together in a, in a single group. Okay. Okay, and then you put all the other guys in the group. So, now what you do is, um, you have to always put them back into rating, like, 
who has the higher thing. But why, what's it called? Rating one, rating two, all has the higher rating. That's why it looks like one, two, three, four. And why, of course, I'm ten, because I'm doing that, uh, just mixing it up. This one's going to be a little bit different. So five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so this one pretty much stayed the same anyways. Okay. So, now, these guys were going to play each other, and these guys are going to play each other. So, so what I'm going to do, oh wait, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so in this situation, now, why I have a point, and these guys have a point, I'm going to have to uh, pull somebody up. I can't play him again because we already played. So I'm probably going to play the next highest rated player. That's because I have to play somebody. Okay? If there's an uneven number of people, usually the lowest rated player gets a draw. But in this situation, why I won, I don't get the draw or the half, the full point buy. I, yeah, I meant to say a buy. You usually get a buy. It's usually the lowest person who has no point. So he would get a full point buy if if this was an odd number of people. Why there's 10 here, it makes it even so everyone gets to play each other. It's just it's just going to be a little bit more different. So I'm going to pair this up and then I'm going to show you how that looks like. Okay, after you have your names printed on here, so of course you got the rank, okay, plus the names, and then the white and black. Now this here is actually a point. So depending on who wins on this one, we know because of the higher rating, this was gonna this is gonna change to a two. So and this is how you're gonna keep on adding and keep track on how many points that people get. So after you get to all that, you put the names back down. So let's look for friendly man once again. I was black last time, but now I'm white this time. So it's alternating in colors. I'm I'm on board three, so I'm white. Okay, and and this time I'm going to get a draw because of I'm going to get a win, a draw, and a loss. So you can see what a draw looks like. So let's just say we get a draw right now, so you know what it looks like. What we do is A we'll put like equal signs, or B we'll put a one point, and then we'll put a two, indicating a draw. So it means that we agreed to a draw. Okay. See what the next round looks like. Okay, these guys look like they're paired already, but they're not. What I did was, what these is actually what you're looking at is they're actually separated by point system. Me and him have both have one and a half points. These guys have both have two points. And these guys have one point. And these guys have a half a point. So they drew because they had the same the same rating. And these guys have no points because uh because of I'm messing things around with how I'm going to do stuff. So I'm going to pair everybody up and we'll see on how it looks like. Okay. I said I was going to make it a five round tournament, but it's it's taken a lot longer than I thought. So I'm only going to make it a three round tournament. So right after this, I'll show you the final standings on who won the tournament and so now I, I because of um color issues um, the two highest players couldn't play each other so I'm playing uh, the, the top guy right now so so uh, here's uh, the next standings so like I'm on right on board one usually that's a high honor to get onto board one and so when you get onto a board one you you should feel proud because it, it took a lot to accomplish that especially with with these guys' ratings uh, most likely I, I would never get there with these guys' ratings. I would never beat any of them. I just I just want to show you how if you were mixing it up how it would how it would be different. So um okay so I'm gonna show you how to read the um a standing sheet next and so I hope you enjoyed the video and uh thank you for watching. First thing you do you look for yourself you can see that I'm on number four so you can see that I'm unrated, and I, you can see on how many points that I got, one and a half. The W means that I have a win, and the 8 means I played the 8th person 
in that row of people. Let's go to the eighth person. That's Cariano Fagnano. And you can see that I beat him. The D indicates that's a draw, and I played the fifth person. So let's go and see who's the fifth person. Who did I draw? The fifth person is Grishik Alexander, and we can see that we shared a point together. The L indicates as a loss. Even the world champion can beat, beat me in a mock-up tournament. So that's why I lost to the world champion. Um, so now we'll see how the where the one is. Of course, I know you know where the one is, but they're just showing you. Nelson Magnus beat me. You can see that in uh, in the standings. I hope this teaches you in how the standing works.